In our last video, we're going to look at some practical examples of solving situational problems using simultaneous equations. So simultaneous equations in practical situations. What you're going to see is some worded problems that can be solved by simultaneous equations. In simple cases, you might find that you can do it without too much of a hassle, logical, or maybe just a bit of trial and error. Um, but I'm going to teach you how to do it pen on paper and how to do it properly to make sure that you get them right in the exam. Of course, you will need to interpret questions because some of them might be linear equations, not simultaneous equations. So here's our first example. Okay, so Mia is seven years older than Frank, and the sum of their ages is 59. So let's try and set this up. First, we're going to have to define some variables if they're not defined for us already. So what I'm going to set up is that Mia, Mia's age is M. And I'm going to say that Frank's age is F. Now, it's, I've got to be careful. I've got to say Mia's age and Frank's age. I can't just say... Mia or Frank, because I don't know whether that means Mia's height or Mia's age or the number of eggs Mia had for breakfast. I just don't know. So I've got to give some sort of context to it. So equation number one is that Mia is seven years older than Frank. And equation number two is that the sum of their ages is 59. And I can see that this is right for the picking on a substitution front. So that's what I'm going to use. Equation 1, equation 2. I've already got Mia as the subject of the formula in equation 1. So let's put that into equation 2. So in equation 2 I now get F plus 7 is what M is equal to, plus F equals 59. And F plus 7 plus F is of course 2F plus 7 equals 59 and that means that 2f equals 52 and I've just subtracted 7 from both sides of course and therefore f dividing by 2 is 26 dividing by 2 and now I can solve for Mia's age as well I've already got Mia's age as a subject here so in equation number 1 m is equal to f plus 7 so in this case, m is equal to 26 plus 7, which is 33. So Mia is 33 years old. That's what the uh, variable means. And Frank is 26 years old. I can go ahead now and solve the question, which says, what is Mia's age? And Mia is 20, uh, sorry, 33 years old. Full stop. There we go. So here's example two. We're going to look at a common shopping problem. And here it is. So four pens and two pencils cost $4.70. And six pens and five pencils cost $7.55. We'd like to know the cost of two pens and one pencil. Okay, so let's set this up. Firstly, let's define our variables. And pens and pencils start with the same letter. I'm going to go back to the good old X and Y. X equals the cost of a pen and of course I'm going to measure that in dollars and y is equal to the cost of a pencil and I'm going to measure that in dollars too so I have to be really careful that my variables are all measured in the same units and now I'm going to set this up the cost of four pens and two pencils which is y is equal to four dollars seventy which is just four point seven for this solution purposes and the cost of six pens and five pencils is equal to $7.55. And now we solve. So this is equation one, and this is equation two. Now in this case, well, I'm probably looking down a barrel of an elimination method, because to cancel out and get one of them as a subject of the equation, it's actually going to be a bit of a pain, because what will happen is I'll end up with worse decimal than I've already got, dividing by two, four, six, or five. So let's do elimination, and I'm going to do this by bringing the best way is probably these two, they're the lowest. So we're going to go through the process of multiplying by 5 and multiplying by 2. And this should bring us to something a bit nicer. So the top one multiplied by 5, of course, is 20 
x plus 10y is equal to 23.5. You've got a calculator to help you with that if you need to. And the bottom one multiplied by 2 is 12x plus 10y is equal to 14, 15.1. Now I can see that if I do equation 1 minus equation 2, this will cancel out my 10 y's, but also leave me in the positives. So 20x minus 12x is equal to 8x plus 0y. I didn't really need to write 0y. And this is equal to 8.4. So I get 8x equals 8.4. Of course, that means that x is equal to 1.05. And that's in dollars. So there's my first solution. Now my second solution is I'm going to substitute this back in to find a y. I've done the elimination method, so it's not going to be easy. But equation 1 is a little bit simpler, so let's do this. So I get 4, you'll probably work down the page by the way, 1.05 plus 2y is equal to 4.7. So this is equal to 4.2 plus 2y equals 4.7. I subtract 4.2 from both sides and get 2y equals 0 0.5 and that gives me y is equal to, divide by 2, 0 0.25 or 25 cents. And so I'm going to finish the problem now. Um, I might need to do the old uh, justify the reasonless or evaluate the reasonless. But in this case, I'll leave that out because I know you know how to do that. Instead, I need to just go back in the context and finish the question because the question clearly asks for the cost of two pens and one pencil. So, two pens plus one pencil. Well, the cost of a oops, the cost of a pen is x. The cost of a pencil is y. So it's two times x, 1.05, plus one times pencil, which is 0.25. And that's equal to 2.1, 2.35. So $2.35. Okay, and for our third example, we have this. Oscar has $10 in a jar in 5 cent and 10 cent coins. He has 155 coins. How many 5 cent coins does he have? Okay, so this one is actually a little bit harder to interpret, but mathematically still not too bad. What we have to do, unlike the other shopping problem where we defined X and Y as the cost in dollars, now we're defining X and Y, well this time just for a bit of fun I'll call them A and B. A is the number of 5 cent coins and B is equal to the number of 10 cent coins. So you need to really stop and think about what you don't know. I know the value of a 5 cent coin, it's 5 cents. So I don't need to know a monetary value. What I don't know is how many of each I have. What I do know though, is that I have A plus B is equal to 155. I'm told that in the question. 155 is right there. Well, what I also know is that the total sum of all the coins is $10. So this is where I'm going to break into um, working out another equation with $10 in there. So the number of A's, which are 5 cent coins, if I multiply that by 5, 5A plus the number of B's, and they're worth 10 cents, so I multiply that by 10, 10B is equal to 10, $10. Now this is a bit of a trap, pitfall, really common. Again, my units are an issue. So always take the time to be considered about units, because in this case, they're in cents, that's in dollars. So I'm going to convert this to cents. It does blow my numbers out a little bit. I've got 155 and 1,000 to deal with, but you have a calculator, so it's all good. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use a bit of elimination. If I call this equation 1 and this equation 2, well, what I'm going to recognise is that if I multiply this by 5, well, they get 5As on both sides. It's a bit tricky here, but we can get there. So I'll draw my... Ah, 
Ah, just a little change of colour there because the white wasn't working too well. So let's do this multiply by 5 first. 5a plus 5b equals 775. You have a calculator. And then 5a plus 10b equals 1000. And so now I'm going to do that subtraction. But if this is 1 and this is 2, I'm going to do 2 minus 1. The reason I'm going to do that is that 10b minus 5b stays positive. The a's cancel. 10b minus 5b, of course, is 5b. And 1,000 minus 775 is 225. So we're happy with that. And then, of course, I just divide through by 5. So B, 225 divided by 5 is 45. There are 45 10 cent coins. So if there are 45 10 cent coins, we can quickly work out how many 5 cent coins there are by going through using equation 1 here. I've got equation 1. A plus B equals 155 gives me A plus 45 equals 155, and therefore A is equal to 110. Subtract 45 on both sides. So my final answer here is that I have 110 5 cent coins and 45 10 cent coins. And I'll quickly read the question again, which is what I just did, and it comes out with this as the important part of my answer. So there we have some practical examples of simultaneous equations. They won't really get much harder than that, I don't think, and it doesn't really matter anyway, because any question you get, the context doesn't matter. You just have to be able to pull out the equations, define your variables appropriately, and then use a method to solve. And we're all good. All the best. Congratulations on making it to the end of our Simultaneous Equations videos.